Welcome to Crimson Guitars, welcome to my home studio, welcome to the chaos that is Shred. I am be loving this build. It's a bit, bit, bit bright there. Uh, <laughs> okay, uh, this guitar is really coming together. I, I'm going to stop telling you what I'm going to do in the next video at the end of each video because I seem to change my mind every single time anyway. Uh, I suppose this has become somewhat of a game. But that being said, I am 99% I'm done with the finish. In this episode, I am going to design a new, a totally new guitar bridge. Uh, for this multi-scale instrument. I am going to do a little bit of staining and finishing on the headstock. I'm going to do a little bit of uh, copper leafing on the back plate, and I am going to finalize the, just the finest little details of what went on last week. The copper leaf needs outlining, uh, adding just a little bit of a black line around the outline of all of these things. That's what made it pop the first time I put all of the stains in, etc., and it is required in this in this case as well, uh, and that really will be it. The finish is going to be applied, and then next week, there's a squirrel up there. Next week, I'm actually going to make this bridge, unless one of you can tell me a major design flaw in what we designed this week. Anyhow, this guitar, well, here is how we came to this point. On with the show. It's gonna look so amazing. You having fun? I'm having fun. So much fun. Burn it. Ha <laughs> ha, yay! Let us start out with designing a bridge. I am in the unenviable position of having, as I mentioned last week, a guitar factory. I have CNC machines, I have a laser cutter, I've got an engineer's lathe, uh, a beautiful Myford ML7, check out vintagetoolshop.com. Um, and, and I have a YouTube channel, and the whole point of the YouTube channel is to teach people how to do things themselves without any of that, really, if needs must. And for the last month or two, I have been thinking about what I'm gonna do with a guitar bridge. And it always comes down to, you can do anything with a milling machine and a lathe. Hell, with a lathe, you can build lathes built this entire world. The, the modern era is down to the invention of the lathe in its current form. It's amazing. Uh, but I want to and have wanted to make a multi-scale bridge without any of those machines. Something that somebody in their shed with minimal tools can do and uh, I think I've come up with something. With a guitar bridge, you need to have several things that are just, you cannot do without them. You need to be able to adjust up and down, and you need to be able to adjust the scale length. So we want action, we want scale length. Now, Ken Parker, uh, he has this fantastic adjustable neck, which means that he can have a bridge that stays put and does not have to have any vertical adjustment because he didn't want that. Uh, check out his Arch Toppery series on YouTube, it is fantastic. Uh, and an Arch Top bridge, you just slide backwards and forwards uh, and then the string tension holds it down. With an electric guitar with a non-adjustable neck, we need to be able to go up and down and we also need to be able to adjust the intonation and uh, the tuning. And that is even more of an issue with a multi-scale neck because 
you know, every saddle isn't necessarily in a straight line. Now, my design here is essentially all about taking readily available standard stock metal, a hand drill, some files, I'm sure, and a hammer. And with that and a couple of bolts, we should be able to come up with something both fully functional and also potentially even better than some commercially available things. Now, the plan here is to have a, a bridge stroke saddle that is in full contact with the bass plate, which is in full contact with the body of the guitar all the time, and thus maximizing the tonal vibrational transfer. I love saying the words vibrational transfer for some reason. Uh, and with as few moving parts as humanly possible, i.e. two or one, really. This could be fun. I'm just going to quickly sketch some stuff up. This isn't the best shot in the world, but uh, it could be interesting. The first issue that I have is the, the fact that I want a saddle. Say that's your guitar bridge here, your, your, the body of the guitar. Okay, that's your body. I want a bridge that sits either directly onto the body or onto a base plate and doesn't have any movement. So here's my, here's my saddle. But we also need up and down movement. So what I would like to do is get a, a relatively large grub screw and cut maybe, how we're, what's that? One, two, three, four, cut a star into it, something like that. And then every time you turn it to raise the bridge up, the string slips into a different notch and you've still got that support. It may be necessary to have a small grub screw coming in from the end to lock that in place once you've got your uh, the height that you require. Okay, but this means that the entire saddle is sitting on the, on the body of the guitar. You then need to have some way of moving that backwards and forwards to counter for changing string gauges, for example, or just when you're building the, the, the instrument. The traditional way is to have an L-shaped piece of metal and a screw coming from there with a spring on it and your saddle just does what it does. Uh, backwards and forwards, you've got your up and down there. The issue with that though, is that you have to have somewhere for the string to go. And that means essentially milling out a channel. I don't want to mill out channels for through body stringing. For one, I don't like drilling holes. That's annoying. For two, as I said earlier, I don't want to mill anything. My thought process is, how do I make this system that doesn't need through body stringing, but holds the, the, the string in place? Now, the next option is to have, essentially, we've got our up and down here, the string comes down, and we've got a ball end on the end of our string. And if you drill a hole at an angle, into our saddle, you could hopefully be able to wedge the ball end into the saddle. Now, that's pulling the saddle up that way, so you need to make sure that you've got something very strong holding it down. This does mean that you could have a screw going from here into the base plate and locking it in place, but that then means that you don't have anywhere to go. You don't have the backwards and forwards motion that we need, which then also means, again, we've got our top view. You've got your string. It's going into either a hole or maybe even uh, you drill two holes and there's an overhang and uh, you've got a keyhole. But then you need a another milled slot and maybe a cap head screw. So that's a cap head screw or bolt over the top. And that means you can loosen that 
move this backwards and forwards, lock it down, and you're sorted. We've, at this point, got a design that is absolutely fulfills all of the criteria that I've given myself. Along the way, I had a number of other ideas and, and things that have occurred to me. Uh, let's move on to a, a different piece of paper. One option is to have your saddles, I'm gonna draw sideways just for fun. So we've got a multi-scale bridge. Whatever our saddle design is, I can't believe I had to count six there. Uh, you could have them just free floating. We've got our adjustment up at the top. That's your height adjustment. You've got some sort of a way that the, set, the springs, the strings <laughs> are held, held in place. And uh, we want backwards and forwards motion without any screws, etc. And it did occur to me that potentially we could have a plate of metal going all the way across, and that screws down to the body, and that locks into your um, into the saddle. So you would have a, a slot there, for example, so you could do a backwards and forwards motion, your cap head screw, etc., and that locks it down. So instead of locking into the body, you're locking into the top. But this is too confusing, um, and it's going to the point where we've got too much going on uh, and I want to make it as, as little as humanly possible, to be frank. Now, there is another option and that is to make essentially a, a bridge and a tailpiece and lots of those ideas. Uh, there was one where essentially we have a rectangle and here is your adjustment and then your saddle I've messed that up entirely. Oh my gosh, that's an impossible, that's an impossible square there. Okay, so we've got our adjustment up and down. We've got, so the, the grub screw couldn't go very far down into the, essentially the movable saddle, because you then have your adjustment from that side, moving backwards and forwards. And then you cut with a hacksaw, a slot, through the top, shallow on that side, going much deeper on that side, with again a hole for your string to go in. And that is a very interesting uh, tailpiece, essentially. And in fact, you could obviously have it completely separate. You could just have a, 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 a rectangle and uh, yeah, strings going through like so. And it's easy enough to make from the, from the end goes like that. Alternatively, obviously, we've got a multi-scale system, so we could, we could do this. And this is, I mean, those would be scary cuts with a hacksaw by hand, but absolutely doable. Uh, anyway, moving on again. Oh, and with this system, with that system where it's being held down and on, um, from above, you would need to have some sort of a physical stop underneath just to make sure that uh, it can't move too far. Uh, I've thought about using concentric bolts, so essentially you've got a screw hole here, but you the you turn your uh, socket screw or something so that it's cammed like that. So you could have that here as a stop, and then that, as you turn it, pushes the saddle backwards or forwards. That's another way of adjusting your um, your scale length, but. Again, there's a limitation, unless you've got a particularly big bolt. But that's an idea that occurred to me. Now, I really like the idea of using a hinge system somehow. So very basically, we've got, say, through body stringing, just to make it easier. So there's your string coming up. There's your ferrules. And we've got the top of our guitar. There's our guitar. Now, it would be insanely cool if our string came here, and our bridge was actually a hinge system. So here's how we lock it in. That's screwed down to our guitar. Here is our saddle, 
and you've got the string touching the saddle all the way along and then going off. How do you adjust the height? I hear you yell at me. You have a simple round bar with a screw. And so, there we go. Uh, this is our hinge. Uh, you could make it as complex as you want or as simple. And essentially inside it, you've got a bolt going down the middle like that. And that's locked into a traditional guitar saddle essentially. And as you tighten this, it pulls the saddle that way. And obviously you've got a spring which pushes it that way. And uh, it, it's elegant because it's hiding all of the moving parts. And I'm quite excited by this idea, to be honest. I think that that, um, I think it could be pretty cool. So, there we go. It's not the easiest thing to draw. And then you've got your, your string. You could string could even, you know, just drop off the edge basically. But from the top of the guitar, all you've got is this beautiful, clean, highly polished, polished expansive metal with the string just going off. And you're like, how does that work? Um, you don't have to have that bit longer. You could uh, flip that out of the way and have your screws go into the body like that. I think I'm going to have to make that one day. I, I suspect probably on a CNC or commission somebody to do it because, yeah. It's fairly simple, it's fairly simple. Now, I like the idea of very simplistic uh, shapes and especially with this instrument with shred. So I, I really like the idea of having just a couple of cubes. And you have your adjustment there with the spring. You've got your height adjustment up and down and then a slot cut in that. So your string is going through into there, boom, boom, and you're done. And it's just two cubes sat on the top of the guitar looking pretty. Uh, I would like to try and find some triangular brass or bronze or copper and do the same sort of thing. So instead of cubes, you've got, that's your space where your spring is, etc. Uh, there's There's, no end of possibilities here, and I'm sure an engineer or two could come up with something a little bit, a little bit better. So that being said, my whole thought was, how do we make something that somebody could build in their shed just using standard bar stock, essentially? And uh, what I've come up with is this, and. Uh, Essentially, the idea, so that goes down there. <sighs> the idea is to start with a piece of material, say three millimeters, three millimeters wide by the right height on both sides, a little square of uh, the same material in the middle. And essentially, if you drill a hole or even two, and then drill through, and you can put a piece of bar stock on, much like if you are putting a, a knife handle together or something like that, uh, slightly chamfer the edge of that hole, and you hit that with a hammer, peen it over, and it, without welding, without um, any kind of heat or anything other than that, other than a, a, a small hammer, you can put something together that is intensely solid. And, uh, well, as I've said, we use knives made like this all the time. I've just ruined my drawing. That line goes completely the wrong place. Anyway, so my plan is to have that, put it together like so. I'm not going to draw that line. Or am I? Ha ha. And what we've got is now a, a gap where we can have our socket headed screw free floating. We've now got our up and down mo motion. 
we've got a big old grub screw or maybe even a machine bolt because a grub screw's got an allen key slot in the middle and we don't want that we want to just take a piece of threaded bar and polish it up nicely and cut our slots in either just the two like that or maybe even four okay so we've got our height adjustment we've got our locking down mechanism and where how how is the string going to be held down benjamin i hear you ask me so what i want to do there's our height adjustment. There's our string. And what I can do is put just a couple of bolts through so the string gets fed through from the top. Your ball end will sit there. There we go, just to tell you what you're doing. The ball end sits in between two grub screws going from the side and locks in place. String then goes up and away. And as long as you've got a big enough, strong enough system holding your saddle down, probably to a base plate, you'll be all right. And that's where I'm sitting at the moment. We've got a single solidified chunk of metal that is both the bridge and the tailpiece. We don't have string through um, drilling, string through body drilling, etc., which is, it's a challenge, it's not fun to do, it's still stressful. I've done it hundreds of, hundreds of times, I've probably, probably not hundreds of times, but I've done it enough, and it still worries me every single time I do it. So if I can avoid that, I will, and if you can avoid that, please do. The entire contraption will be a little bit longer than a standard traditional saddle, which actually looks really cool, and you can, customize it as you want. You can bevel the edges, you can make it out of round stock really if you want. You can make it out of hex bar which is very tempting to me um, or hex shaped at least. This You can't make it out of hex bar. Ignore that bit. Please delete me. No, you deleted me. Okay, that clone is gone. Uh, let me know what you think. I'm really really quite excited about this and it should be easy to make which is the point okay on to shred let's actually do some work oh there he is all right so my issue is these are just a little bit amorphous uh, the blobs lack the definition that you have with the colored sections the blobs of uh, copper leaf at least lack the definition that I need I ran some tests with various different paints underneath our finish and uh, this <laughs> matte black paint, whatever it is, is compatible with the varnish I'm using. Enough of you complained about the maple strip on the edge here. I mean, hundreds of you have complained about that and said it just doesn't look intentional enough. And uh, I, I disagree, I really do like it. But as a result of that, I am going to, I'm gonna copper leaf over it. Uh, I'm not gonna copper leaf the entire back plate because, well, I thought about it and decided not to. Let's get some leafing done. So I'm just going to randomly apply size and let it to cure for an hour two hours depending on how what the temperature is positively balmy rating happy then I will apply the copper leaf but you know this you watched this last week I'm I'm just repeating myself <sighs> is this all there is to life I'm doomed to repeat myself time and time again guitar after guitar after no oh, wait I never do the same thing twice. <laughs> oh gosh. Sometimes I think I sound so gosh darn pretentious. It's uh, it's a problem. But anyway, uh, it's just.
Okay, I'm going to set this aside to cure for a little bit and then think about my headstock. I am not convinced. I'm not convinced. It, we have that and then it just goes off. I think I love the copper leaf. I think I could potentially have some cool color coming up here, but I don't know. It doesn't have a logo on it. Hmm. I think I've got it. I love the look of the angles. I love the look of these angles here. Look at that copper and mahogany. I am going to apply copper leaf on the bevels and be done with it. And maybe a signature there. Being a bit messy, I'm gonna to have to sand off the excess. You hear that? That's uh, that's nearly there. Hold on. So I'm after a squeaking size. Uh, I'm, yeah, still a little tacky. I think maybe three or four minutes left on that. Yeah, and then we will be gold leafing, copper leafing. <sighs> yes. Okay. Okay, I'm going to finish this painting later, after the fact, because you do not need to watch it. We do, however, have to see what this looks like. I do enjoy leafing stuff, I really do. It is just one of those those things for me. All right, I'm gonna call it a day here, I think. Um, the finish, the bridge design, 
she's coming together. I need to start thinking about the Great Guitar Build-Off. Uh, I really do. Ha! Who am I kidding? I've been thinking about nothing else since about the end of last year's competition. Uh, I have got something pretty awesome planned. I hope uh, you will enjoy it. And uh, yeah, keep, keep that in mind. If you aren't in the Great Guitar Build-Off and you are a guitar builder of any shape or size or inclination, you really should be. It's going to be awesome this year. Uh, thank you for watching. Click like, subscribe, hit the notification button. Uh, people have been complaining that they aren't getting all the notifications. That is because you have probably clicked personalized rather than all notifications. I don't know what they're doing. They do what they do and we live with it. But I am not going to stop making videos as long as you keep on watching them. There we go. I can't sand down much more of that because uh, uh, in some of the bits where it's spooged over the edge, it hasn't quite fully cured yet. I'm jumping the gun a little bit. So no B-roll, it's just a close out. Goodbye, good night. I missed my hand. I shouldn't be able to build guitars. I can't even clap my hands together reliably. How the hell am I using chisels? Leave me alone, goodbye. Sheesh.